Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick, and today we are doing IXL T11, which is very similar to IXL T9 and very, very similar to IXL T10. So if you know how to do IXL T10, you'll pretty much just breeze through these problems as well. So they're going to give you a series of shapes, and you're just going to have to figure out how the uh, perimeter or area or volume changes between the two shapes. And so they give you your first shape here, this cube, and it says, hey, if the side length, so all of the lengths here are doubled, then what happens to the surface area? So as I said for all the other videos, it's important to remember that if you're dealing with area, all you're gonna do is uh, get your value here by uh, of how much the side lengths are increasing. So we're doubling, so times two. And for area, you're going to square that because area is two dimensions. So two squared is four, meaning the difference uh, between the areas of our original cube here and the cube with the side lengths that are doubled is going to be four. So our new cube is gonna be four times uh, as large when it comes to the new surface area, okay? For volume, since volume is three dimensions, that would be uh, uh, cubed. So two cubed or two times two times two is eight meaning that it's going to be bigger by a factor uh, of eight right there, okay? Uh, so this one's gonna be four. And then I should just note that if we, do, if we do deal with perimeter here, which it indicates we might, that's just gonna be one for one. So, okay. All right here, perimeter, it's mixed review. So if the side lengths are tripled, then what happens to the area? Okay, well again, it's going to be, um, uh, squared from what we're increasing by. So triple is times three, so three squared is nine. Okay, if the side lengths are doubled, then what happens to the perimeter? So if the side lengths are doubled, or we're dealing with perimeter, which is one dimensions, it's one to one. So if the side lengths are doubling, then the perimeter is also gonna double. Double. Okay, back to the cube. Um, if the side lengths are doubled, then what happens to the volume, okay? Well, two cubed or two times two times two is eight. So that's gonna be eight times as large. Okay, now we have a rectangle here. If just the base is doubled, then which of the following happens to the area, okay? So what I would do for problems that just give you, uh, or say only one part of the shape is uh, changed, I would just find the area in this case of the first shape and then do the doubling and then find the area of the new shape and compare them. So the area of this rectangle is three times four, which is 12, okay? And if the base is doubled, that's gonna be nine. So four times nine is 36. So we have our first area of 12 and our second area of 36. How do we get from 12 to 36? Well, you're tripling that, right? It's increasing by three, so it's gonna be three times the old area. What the heck? Oh, it's, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna jump a level. Uh, nothing new here. If the side lengths are quadrupled, then what happens to the volume? Well, four cubed or four times four times four is 64. So that will be the answer. Okay, if both dimensions are quadrupled, then what happens to its perimeter? It also quadruples, perimeter is one to one, so increases by four. Okay, if both dimensions are halved, then what happens to the area? Okay, well, if it is halved, one over two, right? We're gonna square both of those because of the area, so that's gonna be one over four, so it's gonna be one to four. Okay. If the height is halved, the width is doubled, and the length is tripled, then which of the following statements about the volume will be true? So uh, for problems like this, what I would do is I would just um, map out exactly what the volume is of the first shape and then the volume is of the second, but it has like one is halved, one is doubled, one is tripled. So let's do the volume here. We have 7 times 10, which is 70, and then 70 times 2 is 140. So we have 140 as our first volume. Okay, now volume two. So the height is halved, so two becomes one. The width is doubled. Uh, I'm 
going to say this is the width. So 10 is now 20. And the length is 7. And the length is tripled, so 7 becomes 21. Okay, then what's going to be the volume? 21 times 20 times 1. 21 times 20 is just going to be 420. Okay, so how do we get from 140 to 420? Um, well, 140 times 3 is going to be 420, right? So it looks like we're going to be tripling the size right there. So which answer is it? It's going to be the second one. The new one's going to be 3 to 1. Okay, if the height is doubled, uh, just the height is doubled, what happens to the area? Okay, well, we'll do the area of the first shape. So uh, 9 times 8 is 72. Okay, so 72 of our first shape. And then the height is going to be doubled, so 8 becomes 16. So 16 times 9 is going to be 144. So how do we get from an area of 72 to an area of 144? Well, that's just doubling, right? So it's going to be double. The new ratio to the old is going to be 2 to 1. 1 to 2 would be half, right? Uh, the 1 to 2 would be half, right? 1 over 2. Think of this as 2 over 1. Cool. Okay, so I think you get the idea. I'm going to jump to 90 here to see if anything is different. Okay, same problems, but no diagram. So if both dimensions of a parallelogram are doubled, then which of the following statements about its perimeter will be true? Perimeter is 1 to 1. So um, if all of the dimensions are doubled, which is what it says, that means the perimeter is also going to just double. So right here, 2 to 1. There we go. Okay, so this is where I'm going to end the video. Stay safe, study hard, and I will catch you later for the next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.